Welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll further explore error handling routines, and we're going to incorporate catch when syntax this time. Let's start by clearing out the code from my previous tutorial. I'll comment out these two lines. Now let's replace the input box function. Instead, I'll use the read all text function. Just double click to insert it. And let's take a moment to review what's going to happen here. I've got a text box with a fractional number, 5.8. For this example, I'll use an absolute path. So right click and paste. Now let's bring back these two lines of code so we can see what's going on. And let's test our program. The program gets the value from the text box and we've got our results. Now let's uncomment this line. Here I'm going to change the file name. So what I've done is input an incorrect file and uh, that file doesn't exist. When I run the program now, I'm going to get a runtime error. Here's the generic message we created. Let's click OK and double click to open the code again. Let's comment out these two lines now. At this point, the program gives me information that there is some kind of problem here. But I don't know if I'm dealing with the wrong type of data, or that a file's missing, or maybe a path to a file is wrong, or so on. So in this tutorial, we're going to incorporate an error object to get more specific information about the error that we're generating. Okay, let's type the code in right here. ERR period number space amper symbol space ERR period description. So this function gives us the error number and this function gives us the description of why this error occurs. Let's run our routine again. 53 could not find the file. So we see that the error number is 53 and the description is that the program can't find the file. Let's get back into our code and let's simulate another error. I'll change the drive path from F to A. And let's click OK to run the routine. Now we get error 76. Couldn't find a part of the path, and then it gives us the invalid path. All right, back to the code. Let's make our error message a little bit easier to read. I'm going to type in VB capital C R capital L F space amper symbol. This is Visual Basic's constant carriage return line feed. Basically, this constant creates a hard return. Let's simulate another error. Let's just right-click and cut something out. I'll remove the entire path. So now I've got an empty string in place of the argument. Let's run the routine. Now we see error 5, and there's the hard return. Before the description, empty path name is not legal. Let's click OK, double-click to get back into the code. By the way, let me show you one more example of a difference between a runtime error and a syntax error. We just got a runtime error previously. Let's remove the quotation marks here. So now I don't have an argument, but an argument is indeed required. What I've done here is create a syntax error. Let's run the program and see what happens. iLogic can't compile the code and it lets me know that there's an error, and it lets me know that it's in line 7. OK, I'm going to right-click and paste the path to my file back into the code. Let's simulate another error. Let's say instead of a number, my file contains a string. And let's click OK. Oops, I forgot to change the name of the hard drive. We'll restore that to F. 
And let's run the program now. Now we get error number 13, conversion from string to double is not valid. All right, so far we've witnessed four different types of errors. Let's create specific types of code to catch each error separately. The number our first error was 53. Let's give the user a bit more friendly of a message. I'm going to type file is missing. And let's also type here, error, space, close quotation, space, amper symbol, space. Error 53 refers to the missing file. Let's change the file name and run the program. And we get error 53, file is missing. All right, back to our code. Let's copy this block of code. Right click and copy, and right click and paste. Next, we had error 76, and that was the path was invalid. Let's type here folder is missing, and we'll create error 76. Just change the hard drive letter. Here's the error 76 message. Folder is missing. OK, back to the code. Let's copy these two lines of code. Right click and copy, and Control V to paste. Next, we'd encountered error number five. This was generated by an illegal path name or an empty string. Let me highlight the path, and then right click, cut, and run the program. Error number five folder is missing. OK, back to the code with a double click. Let's copy this block of code one more time. Control V to paste. The last error we'd created was number 13, and this was a data conversion problem. So for our error message, let's type in, enter a valid number. You'll remember that to create this error, we changed the numeric value in our text document to a string. Let's click OK to compile the program. And we get error 13 with a prompt to enter a valid number. We need to incorporate one more catch statement. Let's copy and paste this block of code. Control V to paste it. This catch statement is going to catch all other errors. Let's comment out these two lines. And let's recreate error 13. Click OK. And here's our generic message. Click OK. This concludes our tutorial about the catch when routine.